Hi everyone. Today I'll do a quick demo of real-time migration of a business application from VMware platform to Canonical OpenStack. Our infrastructure consists of the following components. We have VMware infrastructure on the left, Canonical OpenStack, Object Storage, in our case it is Ceph, and Highstack Sakura on the right, having secure connection between the left and right paths. But before we start, let me show you the topology of the application and describe how it works. So we have a business application consisting of 20 virtual machines. It is a Oracle database in a Red Hat, two Windows machines, one with Active Directory, another one with Internet Information Services, and 17 machines, uh, which are Ubuntu Linux machines in Memcache cluster. So the business logic of this application is the following. We have a web application running in Internet Information Services, which retrieves data from Oracle database and stores it in a memcache cluster. And the machine with Internet Information Services is authorized through Active Directory. So uh, let me show you this application running on VMware. And after that, I'll describe you how we'll migrate it to OpenStack. I'm currently in VMware console, where I have 22 virtual machines. One machine with Active Directory, one with Internet Information Services, a bunch of machines in Memcache cluster, machine with Red Hat with Oracle database, and two service VMs, one with Hashtag Sakura replication agent, I'll talk about it in a while. And one machine with router with uh, net functionality just to do port forwarding. So in terms of uh, our agent, Hastic Secure agent, uh, which does replications of all the machines around it, it's a simple Linux Ubuntu virtual machine which has some services installed on it and when this machine starts it discovers all the machines around it and starts replicating it according to a schedule and retention settings which the agent retrieves from the cluster from the backend side okay so let me show you high akura uh, control plane where we have all the functionality to control the replication and migration process and here you can see the dashboard for the partner where we can see the statistics for a number of customers we have a number of devices replicating a number of storage used and cloud sites running so currently I have two customers in my cluster. One is for VMware to OpenStack migration, another one for OpenStack to OpenStack migration. So if we go to this customer, we'll see a customer dashboard where you can see like the statistics specifically for this customer. So number of devices protected, number of device groups and storage used by this customer. And if I scroll down, we'll see 20 machines, which I mentioned before, with uh, information about these machines, like their names, IP addresses, size, their current status, and last restore point. So, for the purpose of this demo, we already did full replication of the virtual machines. So today we'll add some deltas to the business application, do incremental replication, of these machines to an OpenStack site and spin up these machines on an OpenStack. So to do that, what I need to do, I'll take the public IP address to Internet Information Services, which is like which I mentioned with port forwarding, we forward the port uh, to this machine with Internet Information Services. So I'll open this application in a web browser where I have 6,000 entries in my database. Let me retrieve these data entries from the database and see them on the screen. So here you can see it's absolutely artificial data in the Oracle database. And here you can see some information about the cluster I have. So here you can see a bunch of machines in my memcache cluster. And for the first query from the database, we didn't use memcache 
costs to store data, we just retrieve data from the Oracle database and store data in the memcache cluster. So if I click calculate once again, I would read data not from Oracle database, but from the memcache cluster. So you can see for the first time the query took more than four seconds to complete. So if I click once again, you can see that this time it's much, much faster about one second and we have used uh, memcache cluster for this okay so let's add a delta to the business application we have so i'll add one more entry to the database so currently we have exactly six thousand entries so let's add one more entry so it would be vm where to open stack address let it be amsterdam I'm currently in Amsterdam, phone number I don't care. So let's add this entry to the database. So you can see currently we have 6001 entry. So let's, let's retrieve data from the database and try to find our entry in the database. Okay, it would take a couple of seconds to complete. Okay, it's down. So let me try to search this uh, for this entry so here it is you can see that we have this entry in our database okay that's fine we have 6001 entry okay so we are ready to replicate the business application take an incremental snapshot calculate delta send deltas to an open stack site and after that we'll be done and we'll be ready to spin up the application on open stack so to do the incremental replication what we need to do we go back to high stack secure control plane we select the devices we would like to replicate in our case it's all the devices and we click start replication what I did, I sent a comment to the Hystech Sakura agent, here it is, to replicate all these 20 devices we have in our business application. So here in the console you can see that we've started to take uh, snapshots for the machines. After that we'll calculate deltas for these snapshots and send deltas to the OpenStack site where we store these deltas in Ceph in an object storage. So every snapshot is a set of objects in an object storage. It helps us to do deduplication, it helps us to uh, store data in a, an efficient way. So uh, I can do replication uh, manually or I can do it by schedule. So, for example, for groups of devices or for all the devices or for any specific devices, let's check some devices, for example, machine with Internet Information Services, or machine with uh, Red Hat. So I can set a specific uh, schedule. Let's say currently uh, they are replicating every two hours. I can set a custom schedule, let's say replicating every 10 minutes if I want to do that so it's absolutely configurable so I can save these settings and now these two devices would be replicated every 10 minutes and it would take consistent snapshot of this machine calculate deltas and send these deltas to an OpenStack site so uh, let's check what we have with our current uh, replication you can see that some of the devices are in replicating state so we need to wait while they uh, change their status to protected so you can see that we have practically all the devices in a protected stay, uh, in a state and only a few of them are still in replicating state so let's wait for some more seconds and yeah it's done so you can see that all the devices are in a protected state so that means that all the changes all the deltas from the previous incremental replication they are already on an open stack site in Ceph and we are ready to spin up this application in canonical OpenStack. So to do that, to do the spinning up of the, our business application on an OpenStack site, we use uh, migration plans. So migration plan is a scenario or runbook which we use to spin up infrastructure uh, on a new platform.
So here you can see description of all the devices. So for example, here we have a description of the machine with the Red Hat. So you can find here some information about RAM, CPU, ports, what MAC address to assign, what IP addresses to assign, boot conditions, their ranks. Ranks is about orchestration, so if we want not to boot all the machines at once, but to have like some mind in terms of how we boot the machines, what are the dependencies between the machines. So we need to think about orchestration and how to uh, set these dependencies. So for the purpose of that, we have a term called rank. And all the devices except Internet Information Services uh, start in the rank zero. So they start as soon as we boot these machines and the machine with Internet Information Services would start to boot only when all other machines are already booted. Also we have here information about uh, such things like port forwardings, uh, included disaster recovery or migration plans and also uh, subnets if we want to create a subnets in our project in OpenStack or if we have already pre-created project or tenant we can just do recovery or compute part without recreating networks because they're already there. So we'll use this disaster recovery or migration plan in our uh, spinning up process, in our migration process and uh, in depth uh, underneath it would be converted into a heat template and we'll execute this head template on an open stack to boot uh, all these machines uh, uh, in canonical open stack. Okay so to do that what I need to do I just select a migration plan and run the migration. So the migration consists of a couple of steps where I can pick uh, any other migration plans I want or I can revise my plan, just edit it, uh, add RAM, CPU or any other fields which I can edit or I can type a custom migration plan if I want. But in our case we are okay with our current plan because it's up to date, it reflects all the changes we want to have uh, on an OpenStack site. So I just click next and on the last step I type the name for my uh, cloud site, it would be VMware to OpenStack. I pick a recovery point or restore point, it's a point in time I would like to take my snapshot. So for all the machines I would take the closest snapshot in the past to the time I selected. So I'm okay with my current time. And so and, uh, below that I have a description of the business application which will be recreated on an OpenStack site with name of the machines, the IP addresses, CPU RAM, ranks and subnets which, which would be assigned on an OpenStack site. So I am okay with that and I just click run migration and that's it. So we've started the migration process. So let's now jump to an OpenStack, log into it. So you see that we're using Ubuntu OpenStack for our target platform. So here we've just created a new tenant. If you remember, I typed a name for a cloud site. So you, hear, you can see it here. So it's in the ending uh, after the underscore we added this uh, name of the cloud site, so we created a new project or new tenant. As I mentioned, it's possible to do migration to already pre-created tenant with VPNs, routes, firewalls, etc., etc. All this stuff can be pre-created before we do migration of the computing part, or we can just do the migration to a newly created uh, project. So uh, on this stage currently what we're doing on the background, we're doing a P2V or V2V process. It's a virtual to virtual or physical to virtual transformation where we change hypervisor from ES6i to KVM. We created a bunch of volumes here, so you can see a bunch of volumes and we are about to start booting these machines. So in a couple of seconds I'll refresh this page and we'll see how the machines from our business application which we saw on VMware will start to appear on OpenStack. So let me refresh the page and yeah you can see that 
we're starting our machine with the Red Hat. If I update the page once again, we should see a few more machines starting to boot in OpenStack. Yeah, here you can see that we already have 20 items running. So we need to wait for a couple of minutes until these machines would be booted. And after that, we'll be, uh, we'll be able to uh, open our migrated web application in a browser uh, and check that our entry, which we added to the Oracle database running in Red Hat in VMware, successfully migrated to our OpenStack and we took a consistent snapshot of our business application and Oracle database and we still have connectivity between all the components in our business application. So let's refresh this page and take a look at what's going on here on OpenStack. So yeah, you see that we've started all the machines except Internet Information Services. So here you can notice that we have one additional virtual machine. It's called SVM or Service VM, which is a core service VM image. Uh, and this machine is a simple router it's, we assign a floating IP address to this machine, so when we start to, uh, to look at our web application, we'll enter this IP address as it's a public IP address, we'll uh, start to enter that and it will do a port forwarding to our machine with Internet Information Service. And when this machine is booted, we'll be able to log into our web application. So yeah. We have machine with Internet Information Services here, it's running. So uh, now we're ready to try to log in to the web application and take a look if our entry is in place. And we have successfully migrated the business application. So to do that, what I need to, to do, I need just to take the public IP address from my service VM let me find where it is. Yeah, here it is. So I take this IP address and enter it in my web browser. And after that, we should see our web application UI and we should see our entry in place. So let's wait for a couple of seconds until Internet Information Services starts on this virtual machine. Yeah, you can see we have a title here. So yeah, 6001 entry here. So let's click calculate and see that we have our entry without any kind of corruption and all the data is in place. Okay, so it's loading so a couple of seconds and it should be done, yeah. So if I go down, you can see that my entry is here as it was, so we have successfully migrated the business application from VMware to OpenStack in a matter of minutes. So that's it. Thank you for your attention and your time.